Hello, this is Jerusalem and we have arrived. Well done, all of you. I thought that a virtual pilgrimage might properly come to an end with, well, a virtual welcome to this special place. This is the terrace outside St Andrew's Church and Guest House, the Church of Scotland's presence here in Jerusalem. The church is, as you might expect, quite Presbyterian. It's simple in an attractive sort of way and even plain certainly compared with the Orthodox and Catholic churches round about. There's little stained glass, though there is above the chancel an impressive tapestry made of wool from Bethlehem, which represents the Holy Spirit. Some of you have quite recently worshipped in this very building, and this might bring back all sorts of memories. For others, coming here might be a dream. In one sense, though, we've all come here. Each step of the journey of more than seven and a half thousand kilometres was taken by one of us. For all that we didn't walk through Europe or step on the ground of Turkey or find ourselves actually standing here in Jerusalem, nevertheless, we made a considerable effort. Together, we made progress and we did so more quickly than any of us expected. You've also had a very brief chance to look around you here in the place to which we were walking. Pilgrimages, though, are often about what went before and also about what comes after. So, there's just a little bit more work which I'd like you to do. You were out walking perhaps where you live or somewhere you went on holiday and the steps which you took were part of a much larger journey in terms of distance and people involved. Can I ask you just for a moment to reflect on how that makes you feel? What does it mean to you that your activity counted, that we couldn't have done this without your contribution, that you played a part? One of the strange side effects of being isolated has been a renewed, recovered, perhaps even a reinvigorated sense that our contribution matters. It was when we were told that we had to remain physically distant that we used every avenue we could to be together as families, neighbourhoods, communities and churches. This virtual pilgrimage is only one example and you can see that it takes everyone's active involvement to make it happen. So you are part of this, with all the benefits and all the responsibilities that brings. Our joint success is your success. I hope you feel good about that. And I want to say just a particular word of thanks to Richard and Maureen Park. This was their idea. And Michael Park, through his work at Big Team Challenge, made it all happen. I was hooked over the past weeks as I entered my, admittedly, very modest mileage but saw just how far we had been able to travel together. The website was spot on, and our thanks go to Michael for making all of that happen. Richard and Maureen encouraged us on the way with quizzes, shared tales on the pandemic, and we talked together about our lives, just as we would have done if we had been walking on the road beside one another. We're grateful to both of you, Maureen and Richard, for getting us going and for keeping us going on this exciting task. I suspect that for a long time. We'll tell people that in the days following the movement restrictions, we walked together to Jerusalem and we really did walk that distance. And what about the future? For some, not least in Africa and in India, the days which lie immediately ahead are ones of threat and risk. The coronavirus pandemic may still have much damage to do and those who have fewest resources will be least able to confront it. We made this pilgrimage largely for ourselves, but pilgrimage very often has a connected sense of giving to others. And so you might wish to give to the work of Murambinda Hospital or Scottish Love in Action's work among poor children in India. You can give through Orchard Hill if you hand in a cheque here and mark on perhaps a, a note where you would like your money to go. And if you can also tell us that you're happy for us to reclaim the gift aid, then we'll do all the administration to make sure that all your contributions are sent on as quickly as possible. And for yourself in these days to come, what does the pilgrimage mean to you? What does this adventure say to you about the difference that teamwork can make, the part in whatever it is that you might be able to play wherever you are in the days to come? And finally, I just wanted to say that pilgrimage has a religious dimension. In the past, people did it perhaps to earn some kind of favour with God. That's not at all the way we see it. But it is still spiritually enriching. I've imagined at times on my walks that Jesus often walked alongside people. I find the Jesus who travels along with me 
and who keeps me traveling along with him, an attractive Lord, a challenging one too, though. He asks us to keep walking and not to give up when the road is steep or the rocks are big and difficult to cross. And he keeps walking with us. Just as he shares our frustrations and tiredness, so I hope he shares our sense of accomplishment. And perhaps he looks out beyond the city and further even than the hills in the distance and smiles and asks if we're ready, perhaps for another journey. Maybe not quite yet. We need to rest and eat and come to maybe the best place to end such a trip as this is at a church with an adjacent guest house. We set out from one church of Scotland and here we are arriving at another. This one, though, provides not only a chance to worship, but also food and a bed for the night. After a rest, faith invites us to keep going together with one another and together with the God who always walks with us. For all of us really are pilgrims on the way. And so I leave you with some pictures from the city which we were aiming to reach throughout our pilgrimage where we have now arrived. Take just a few moments to look back on all you've done and all you've achieved together in these past weeks. <laughs>